Today, I'm gonna tell you about the five best upgrades for your mid-level e-mountain bike. All right, this is an important video. What to upgrade, what not to upgrade. I'm gonna give you the five best ones in order of priority. And, and I polled our users uh, on one of our groups on which ones are important. And mid-level, I'm gonna define as $5,000 to $7,500, a lot of money. That's still mid-grade, but that's a sign of the times. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and what I want you to do when you buy your bike is at least ride it at least five to 10 times. Don't be changing stuff right away that you've never tried and you know, you're not sure of your likes, dislikes, preferences yet. You know, allow yourself to get used to the bike. Yeah, that way you know what, you'll know what to upgrade first and you'll appreciate them as you change them. This list is gonna be tailored for e-mountain bikes. I think we have specific needs uh, that are unique uh, to the sport and the way we ride them. And in the end, I'm gonna tell you what not to upgrade. Don't waste your money on this stuff I'm gonna tell you in the end. All right, the first one is kind of a slam dunk, but there is a little caveat I'll tell you about uh, in the end, and it is tires and tire systems. So e-bikes, you really have the opportunity to maximize your grip. Ma ma maximum grip equals more fun, more safe. So that's really good. And then you can maximize your casing as well so you don't pinch flat as much and uh, you know, get that dreaded flat tire out there. And you're not as worried about weight and rolling resistance. You know, I have ASA guys on my, on my normal bike, my enduro bike, and man, when I have to pedal 2,000 feet on it, it I, I really think I'm doing the work of 3,000 feet. So you know, it's a big compromise on those bikes. And, uh, but on e-bikes, hey, I use one or two more bars on the battery. I don't use it all anyway. And so the caveat is, it depends what your bike came with. In the old days, they didn't come with good stuff, but now four of the latest e-bikes that I got had Asagai front and DHR rear, or dissector rear. So you don't have to upgrade those. Those are pretty good. Uh, also the Specialized and the Trex, they now have really good house brand tires, uh, if you got them in 2022. Before that, not so good. So some of the upgrades, so the new Specialized tires are good, T7, T9 compound. Uh, if you love those, just go with the new ones, better design and better rubber. WTB uh, really up their game. They have uh, the, the Judge and the Verdict, both in 2.5, 29er. Really good casing, huge knobs, uh, and good size now as well. And, and, and kind of affordable. And finally, just what I have in-house in, in is uh, the whole new line of Continental really gets my stamp of approval. Subscribe to the channel, by the way, because I'm gonna be reviewing uh, all the Conti tires uh, in detail. So this one's called the Crypt Total, uh, and it's got really good construction, good rubber, you know, good tacky rubber, and protection, they last a long time, and there's five of them that you could choose from, and you could see from the rating here if they're good at protection or grip. And finally, upgrade on, still, we're still on number one. Upgrade to tubeless if it's not already tubeless. Usually they don't give it to you tubeless because it loses air uh, on, the, on the bicycle floor uh, because they have to be ridden to really seal themselves. So get to tubeless and really manage your tubeless sealant. Tubeless sealant is a big problem of the industry where it needs to have uh, a certain level, a couple, a couple ounces in there floating, but they, it always evaporates. You know, after six months, it's all gone. So you have to manage that and refill somehow. Uh, a good sealant is this new one, WTB again. Uh, their sealant is super good, lots of sediment in there, and it doesn't evaporate quite as quickly. Um, but just an anecdote that my last four flats in my group were all tubeless, uh, and we were like shaking the tire. None of them had sealant. He goes, oh, you need to refill sealant? <laughs> Nobody tells you that in the manual. And nobody reads the manual anyway. Okay, the second most important one is upgrade your brake system. Brakes are so essential for e-bikes, even more than normal bikes, because of two things. The bikes are heavier, 20 pounds heavier. It, it feels like 30 pounds on your body because you can't move it around like, like your body. And then you go much higher, much further uh, on these bikes. So I'll give you an example. So this is, this is my old rotor on my look carbon bicycle, it was plenty. And now my e-bike, my Levo came with this, 180 rotor, but I'll show you a picture. This thing is torched. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't gain weight or anything. 
it was just doing different rides and the bike was just much much harder on the brake so it was heating up this rotor that it was so discolored so i'm all like oh i probably need a new one so the new the cool rotors are so this is 180 you get 200s but really you could get uh, a bigger one in the front that's where 80 percent of your braking is uh, these are 220s uh, and uh, they even make them as you get bigger on the rotor it's good that some manufacturers make them thicker because they they warp less and they dissipate heat better keep an eye on your brake pads just because you had avid sintered pads before you don't doesn't mean you, ha you have to get those those are not that good anyway the uh so there's a whole line of uh, brake pads that are better than stock and those are cheap upgrades uh, and finally upgrade your brake you know this magura mt7 it came stock on my gen 3 levo and it is amazing so four pistons four brake pads per side eight brake pads so it's a little harder to maintain but man, when you got them dialed, there's nothing like it. You know, the power and the, the modulation, you know, the, the, the hand effort, so good. So other good brakes are Shimano, SLX, XT. X, XTR is good too, but stay away from XTR. Uh, and then the uh, TRP, the HR Evo, really good. It's like Shimano, but with more modulation. And finally, the Hayes Dominion A4, very good brakes. All right, number three upgrade is the shocks shocks and forks so mid-level means you're got you're not going to get the the good the real good shocks and forks uh, unfortunately those these things are expensive and why is it important it's important because you have a heavier bike you're going to be descending a lot more and you know you might have noticed this that your bike is not as playful uh, as your old bike uh, it, it, it goes uphill good but it doesn't go downhill so good you know it, you can't jump kind of snow plows through corners and whatnot a lot of that is because of your suspension the suspension was not made for e-bikes levo and you know it's not supporting the uh the bike uh, the heavy bike and balancing it so what's essential is you get a an, uh, a shock with a big can big volume dissipate the heat and a lot of adjustment a lot of, you need damping to really suspend the bike uh in it in its travel you know that way it's not wallowing around you know like 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 a waterbed um support that thing and the bike will corner better it will jump better it'll do everything better you can get a coil shock as well and make sure the spring is matched to your body weight and make sure the bike is ready for a coil spring uh is there's a lot of stress too on the on the shaft of the of, of a coil spring so push industries the 11.6 it's an amazing one. Coil, you need to damp it even more uh, to control it. And also a DVO, JDEX, very good. Also, oh, there's a new Marzocchi, like right here on my rise. This bike had this shock. It's fine, trail bike. And then I put that shock on, the Marzocchi, with a sideways can, and, and now it's an all-mountain bike. I go everywhere. And speaking of that bike, it had a 140 fork. I upgraded it to 160. Boom, new bike. Uh, make sure you watch your geometry, but uh, it really it it's, it really allows you to use the e-bike for for more adventures and more fun. So the key with uh, the fork when you upgrade your fork is I like the grip two damper uh, because now you have four knobs of damping, uh, and you want to dial in your damping. Be a student of adjustability of adjusting and air pressures because it'll pay off dividends. For you uh, tire pressures too okay number four upgrade this was a little unexpected uh, but suggested by some of our group members is upgrade your dropper post okay mid-level means you might get a house brand post not good uh, but really for sure unless you're standard size the the post is not going to be optimized for your body what does that mean you want the maximum post that's that you can have for your leg length uh, that you could still, you know, sit sit properly, get uh, good extension, and drop that and you get the most drop. So usually, bikes come with 125 or 150. Uh, for me, uh, I can do a 170 or 180, depending on the bike and the post. So, man, change changes the game because you improve bike body separation and you can pump terrain better. The bike's out of the way when you need it. 
So very cool. And also the quality is important. You want light action on the lever and you want you want to actuate it uh, with with a little pressure. You don't have to just jump on it with your weight. Uh, that would be that would be pretty cool. Uh, and you know, bike yoke, even at an angle, it'll go down pretty good. So bike yoke, the new Fox is pretty good. Uh, one up components and P and W uh, are, are quite good in the dropper post department. All right, number five, I'll throw you kind of a, uh, a monkey wrench here, is upgrade the, the rider protection, okay? The pedals and the rider protection, okay? Uh, very important. So on the, on the pedals, I would say consider flat pedals. You know, even if you've been 20 years on clip, clipped in pedals, uh, and, and kind of if you're pedal curious, this might be the time to give that, to give that flat pedal platform a try. I was 20 years clipped, and now I'm like five years flat, but I can do both now. And my riding has improved so much, and it saved me from many, many crashes, um, because I just stick my foot out. So you could try technical stuff better, because you could, you could, you could put your foot out in a millisecond. Uh, and also you learn how to ride a bike by using physics, and not by using locks. Clip, clips are locks, you're locked to the bike. Um, but with physics, like a skateboarder, a uh, surfer, you can do a lot of things if you're doing it right. And man, it uh, takes time, but it's worth it, I think. It's a lot safer as well. And then on the, on the protection as well, get some knee pads, get some shoes that have some real armor. Because you, you have to spin these, uh, these pedals sometimes in, un under a root or a rock. And oh man, you're going to break your toes. So get some protection there. Knee pads. There is no consequence now to wearing knee pads all the time. Uh, even a full face helmet, if that makes you feel better, if that protects you. Because now they have 600 gram helmets. If you get too hot, just give, it, give yourself a little more assist. Make your own wind, uh, make your own ventilation, and it'll give you a, uh, a much safer experience without really a lot of compromise. So I think that's five. I'll give you a couple wild cards. The first one is what not to upgrade. Uh, don't upgrade what you used to do on normal bikes. Lightweight stuff. Carbon, carbon rail, carbon this, carbon that. They don't do anything. Carbon frame, they don't do anything, okay? Stay away from the lightweight stuff. You'll save, you'll spend two grand and you'll save two pounds and it's done you nothing, you know? Uh, and you, it's more likely to break, but they usually don't perform as well. You know, just like, just like this scenario. This is uh, XX1 and this is, GX, this is the expensive stuff. This is about 80 grams more than this, but way cheaper and w it lasts longer. It's more solid, the, the shifts are more solid and it lasts longer because it's, it's, it's steel, it's not aluminum. Consequently, because it's cheaper, you can replace it in a more timely manner, you know? When you gotta spend 500 on this, kinda hurts, you kinda delay it, stretch, stretch everything out, so. Uh, don't get the lightweight stuff. Don't get the, the high-end drivetrain XX1, XTR. Don't do that. You know, that's no good. When you drop your bike weight from 51 to 49 pounds, it does nothing. When you drop your analog or traditional mountain bike weight from 21 pounds to 19 pounds, that's good. You know, you might win a race because of that. But we're in a different game here. Don't chase the weight. You know, don't chase the bling stuff. Go for the stuff that's solid and reliable. Okay, and finally, back to what to upgrade. Have a little fun here. Upgrade your post-ride party apparatus. What do I mean? Get a better cooler. Get a get a get a nice chair, camping chair, a table, your 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 stove, charcuterie board, what have you. Because you're gonna party a lot more. You're gonna be you have a, a bigger smile on your face, and you're gonna finish your rides an hour, two hours earlier. You're never gonna be late, I don't think, unless your motor dies and uh, you're gonna have just more time to have fun with your friends. So upgrade your post-ride game. All right, so hope you enjoy that. Thanks a ton.